So in terms of the popularity of regenerative medicine, it's kind of on the forefront of new technologies that are being developed to help people with chronic pain. Um, what you're really trying to do with regenerative therapy is actually heal damaged tissue, which is kind of a novel approach in our field. We're used to giving a molecule to help with pain. And what we're trying to do now with these um, biomolecules, basically, or what they are, is to restore, um, repair, and kind of heal damaged tissues. Platelet rich plasma is it's acquired via venipuncture um, with a patient. The whole blood is then centrifuged, usually twice, to get the platelet rich plasma. Um, it's usually recombinated with bovine or um, calcium serum to activate it before it's injected. Um, typically, where we're seeing its use is a lot in orthopedics for injections um, into tendons that have been um, damaged, such as rotator cuff uh, tears, ACL tears, things of that nature. Usually doing the injections under direct ultrasound guidance to make sure we're injecting into the tendon rather than into the joint space. In terms of its application for chronic pain conditions, um, the data, there's some to support its use for chronic tendinopathies. In terms of spine data and injection into um, disc material, that's still kind of on the forefront and we're still kind of making advances in that area. So some contraindications to um, injection of uh, plasma rich, uh, pla excuse me, platelet rich plasma is uh, patients who have any um, thrombocytopenia, low platelet counts, a history of active um, hematological cancers such as leukemia, lymphoma, um, and patients who are on um, anticoagulants like heparin or Coumadin. So uh, future applications, it's, it's um, for PRP, it's really been shown to help with uh, diabetic ulcers, non-healing chronic ulcers, whether they be diabetic or venous stasis ulcers. And um, currently the CMS has approved its use for patients with those conditions as long as they're enrolled in an active clinical trial. In terms of its use for um, injectables into the spine, um, a lot of the data that's coming out is injecting into um, disc material for patients that have radiculopathy from disc bulges or disc herniations and seeing what the long-term effectiveness of that procedure is. As of right now, it's not covered by any major health care plan. It's still considered investigational. Um, and the use of acquiring it, it's time consuming. Um, so when family doctors are seeing a lot of patients in their practice, this procedure in terms of the venipuncture, drawing of the blood, centrifuging it, takes on average 20 to 30 minutes before you're able to actually do the injection. So it is time consuming and it is pricey with patients paying out of pocket currently to have it injected.